What's up, YouTube? It is I coming at you finally with that ARC 5 review. As some of you may know, some of you may not know, we watch the entire ARC 5 anime live over at twitch.tv Duel Links Entertainment. If you're not followed there, you are missing out. Uh, on the anime viewings, uh, it was available for free in English on YouTube and available for free in the Japanese sub on Crunchyroll. So, Arc 5, oh boy, where to start with this anime? I guess, um, I guess, I guess I'll start off with the positives, uh, before we get too far into it, too long, didn't want to watch the video, uh, a lot of potential that ended up honestly being wasted in my opinion um to start off with some of the good stuff the soundtrack the ost is by far the best part of arc 5 it is, f it is 10 out of 10 5 out of 5 on the soundtrack it is so freaking good um gameplay is irrelevant by the way the gameplay is just me playing ddd couldn't put any of the anime stuff on screen in fear of DMCA issues from Konami so you can ignore it if just look at my face <laughs> um the soundtrack is absolutely fantastic. There are several moments in this anime that the soundtrack just make, you know? Um, namely, the, the, the Dennis versus Shun fight during the Synchro era, uh, where, you know, he's got the raptor, the satellite raptor coming out, and the, the chorus is going crazy, and he just gets obliterated from space. I ain't ever seen some shit like that. Uh, and, and no Yu-Gi-Oh anime, you know what I mean? That 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 straight up looked like something out of like a Final Fantasy uh, boss fight or something. It was insane. And those moments are made by the uh, by the soundtrack, you know. And uh, you know every character has you know this unique soundtrack, and they're all just you know whenever I hear them, I think of that character, and that's really good because the characters are very weak in this anime, so having that soundtrack kind of remind you of them is, you know, something that's like, it helps them out a lot, you know, like when I hear Gong's theme, that's Gong's theme, you know what I mean? When I hear Yuya's theme come on, I know he's about to do something super cringy and, <laughs> you know, not as exciting, but I know it's still them. And I just think, I don't know, the, the soundtrack carried so hard, easy 5 out of 5 for the soundtrack, best part of the goddamn anime. Um, the animation, the animation's not bad. You know, all things considered, I, I think actually Yu-Gi-Oh! Department has some really good animators uh, working for them. Um, it's not as, as good as some other ones. I watched some clips of, like, Zexel and stuff, and Zexel seemed to have better animation. So I'm not sure if, like, this was something that was inconsistent between projects or what the case might, might have been. Uh, but it was, it was still very good. The only downside is the CG. All the major boss monsters have CG uh, for their, uh, you know, summoning and their attacks and stuff like that. So... <laughs> that was uh, that was unfortunate, if you will. Um, and yeah, the CG. I, 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 by default, I don't like CG, but the CG in this anime was especially ugly. Uh, whenever the pendulum dragon dropped down, and he looks like a giant chicken just running across the board, you know, I get really turned off from the animation department. So. Not a huge fan of the CG in itself, but the but the animation besides that is really good. Looking at it overall probably give it like a three out of five for animation specifically for the cg uh kind of keeping it down on that front um and then the duels the duels they're okay the duels are okay they they could be way better some of the duels are really 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 good uh like the shun versus dennis one um sora versus shun Pretty much a lot of the duels with Shun included Shun and Crow. <laughs> you know, the, the he was one of those characters that was, you know, more in-depthly designed. Um, you know, a couple of the Reggie duels are really good as well. You know, the, he, he played the DDR type and, and, you know, did cool stuff with it. Um, but a lot of the duels were also ruined by action duels uh, or action cards, action duels, whatever they want to call them. And um, it's such a dumb concept, action duels. There's always like dumb concepts that could be implemented well. For example, the turbo duels, right? You get the speed counters or whatever. But that one makes a little bit more sense because they're, you know, it's part of the duel. They're like speeding on a track. They're kind of racing and dueling at the same time, trying to overtake each other. So that one makes a little bit more sense. Uh, the action cards don't really make any sense, <clears throat> in my opinion, because you can just kind of... You, the only restriction is you can only use one at a time and have one in your hand at a time. So as long as you are uh, using them and discarding them rapidly, it doesn't matter. You can just keep using them as many times as you want. And that's just a concept that's just so, so silly because uh, there are mo multiple times in the anime where the, the, the guy just isn't taking his turn 
and just kind of running around looking for action cards. And then, you know, and it doesn't help towards the end of the series. They get lazy with the action cards and just start giving us the same two or three action cards to basically evade damage. So even the, 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 the writers, um, you know, they, they stopped caring about the action cards, you know, midway through the season uh, and just started giving us random stuff, you know, just, just to fill time, essentially. So... Two out of five for the duels. There were some good duels, but overall, the duels were ruined by action duels. That's just how it is. Moving on. Story. Oh, my goodness. The story. Holy crap. Where do I even start? I guess at the beginning. I don't know, dude. It, 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 so much potential was in this story. I think we got to, like, episode 30-something. Uh, whatever the duel, right after Sora versus Shun, I, you know, I was like, guys, this is either going to be the best story, the best Yu-Gi-Oh! story I've ever seen, or one of the worst ones ever. And it was not one of the best ones, I can tell you that. Um, starting off, uh, talking about the story, we 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 get introduced to all the characters. There's a lot of filler up front in Arc 5. Um, that's one thing I did not really enjoy. The, the filler is very up-fronted. Once they get rid of the filler up front, there isn't that much later on in the series. Uh, there is a, there, there are recap episodes, which are you know somewhat skippable. You just have to click through because there's a little bit of story in those episodes. And there's a little bit of filler towards the end, but most of the filler is front-loaded as they try to, I guess, world-build, but it doesn't really matter the world-building because we're going to be synchro, we're going to be dimension-hopping anyway, so I don't, I don't really understand why they went and tried to build the world and why they tried to build all these side characters that we won't see again until the end of the sh uh, a show. It didn't make much sense, <laughs> if we're being totally honest. Um, so we... We do all that. They introduce all the characters. They slowly foreshadow the um, the idea of multiple dimensions and multiple Yuyas and all that. And a lot of people like that foreshadowing stuff. Me, personally, unless that foreshadowing stuff actually goes somewhere, I'm not a major fan of it. And it didn't really go anywhere uh, in this anime. It was, it was it, you know, it, it ultimately didn't matter um, that they were foreshadowing all that stuff. So for me, I would have much preferred they just told a straightforward story. Um... They foreshadow all, like, the different Yuyas coming from different dimensions, and there was a war between the dimensions, and, you know, one of the characters we meet, Sora, who's, we think, is a good guy at first, um, but then, you know, towards, towards the Shun versus Sora duel... Uh, Shun is from a the XC dimension, and he his dimension has been ravaged by the fusion dimension where Sora is from. And then all of a sudden, Sora has this crazy face and is like insane. He's calling him prey and all this crazy stuff. Where you're just like, dang, this guy is it was like actually evil this whole time. You know, I had no idea type of thing. Um, and that was super cool. That reveal was super cool. That first tournament arc that they had, this was this was happening during the first tournament arc, was super cool. You got to see the different characters, their different decks. Uh, we saw a lot of different cool decks, Phantom Knights, Constellars, uh, Gem Knights, uh, all sorts of Raid Raptors, all sorts of different decks that were all super unique and cool, and I hope that come to Duel Links. Um, but then right afterwards, they start this whole dimensional hopping thing where they <laughs> where they have to go to the different dimensions to try and, you know, get allies to, to take on the fusion dimension. Um, and that's kind of the idea. The, 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 the idea is we have to stop the fusion dimension from going around and making everyone into Yu-Gi-Oh cards because there's a big mystery. They keep turning people to Yu-Gi-Oh cards and we don't know why. Um, so... I don't know, like, they, they, they go to the Synchro world, and this is probably the worst part of the show. The The whole anime is, like, 148 episodes, and the Synchro Dimension is, like, 50 or 60 of those episodes. It's insane for how long we s just chill in the Synchro era. Um, we It really does, you really start to feel that you're in there for a long, long, long time. And there were moments where I'd look up and be like, chat, are we still in the Synchro era? And we were. We were still in the Synchro era. It was it was, it was was insane. And they were like, yeah, we, you're not even close to the ending of the Synchro era. What the? <laughs> you know? So we're going through the Synchro era. Uh, we get cameos, Crow and Jack. And this is another thing I don't really, I, I didn't watch... The animes that Crow, Jack, Aster, Alexis, all the all the all the cameos where they came from. I didn't watch any of those animes, um, but even if I did, I don't think it would have made that much of an impact on me. Um, 
I know it was, it's probably cool to see your favorite characters come back as a cameo appearance, but I feel like the cameo characters had too much to do with the story. Like, Jack kind of took over the Synchro World storyline, and Yuya kind of took a back seat, um, which is another big problem. Yuya, as a protagonist, doesn't act like the protagonist until the very end of the series, which is super weird, <laughs> you know? It isn't until everything is resolved that he finally does anything, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, Jack takes over the story when he shows up, uh, and then no one else really does because they have so few episodes left. Remember I said Synchro Dimension lasted so many episodes, so then we, we finish the Synchro Dimension, we go into Exceed Dimension, and Exceed Dimension's like 10 episodes. That's it. What is that pacing, dude? Like, we spent so much time in Synchro, and then like 10 episodes in Exceed, and then we finally go to Fusion, and then Alexis shows up, and it's like, why is Alexis here? Doesn't matter. She she wins some NPC fight, and then immediately loses the fight where she needs to win against like one of the main bad guys. And I'm like, what is going on with this pacing? It's just so insane. Um, so yeah, the pacing is not very good in this show. Uh, that's probably its biggest weaknesses. It's it's just way, way crazy with the pacing. It's it's all over the gosh darn place. Um, wow, monkey. On top of that, there's also uh, uh, the action duels. They kind of come over, so it's not it's not like uh, it's not like you go through and you have to like okay, we're playing turbo duels back in the old synchro dimension. No, it's just action duels on motorcycles. So. Yeah, the cameos show up and they're important, but they're not important enough where you have to go watch the old anime to appreciate them, I feel. They're, they're just completely different characters, completely different dimensions. Literally, it's just a character copy to try and save the show from failing. It didn't work, by the way. Uh, them adding the extra ca cameo characters actually made the show fail even harder. So, there's that. Um, so, yeah, the story, it's all convoluted. It's its the, one of the weirdest stories I've ever seen. Stuff starts randomly happening towards the end. Uh, people that were turning into cards just magically come back with no explanation. Uh, chat was trying to give me explanations, but none of it was actually explained in the show. So it was more like trying to defend the show than rather, you know, tell me what's going on, essentially. Um, and then the ending. Oh, God, the ending. So basically... Yuya has all these dimensional counterparts to him, which are supposed to look the same. They don't, from a character uh, character design standpoint. They all look completely different, uh, which I'd be okay with if the show itself hasn't before in in you know the Yugi Yugi verse made people look the same. Yugi and uh, Atem look the same. Right? They're, they're obviously different. If you saw a picture of both, you could easily tell who's different. There's differences between them, but they look the same. They're trying to pass along that Yuya and all his clones essentially look the same, but they, they don't. So because of this happens, every single time another Yuya shows up, either Hugo, Yuri, or, um, or the uh, uh, Yuto, the show has to constantly remind you, oh my god, he looks just like Yuya. They have to constantly keep doing this, uh, because otherwise there's nothing that would actually attach them to each other. They look nothing identical whatsoever. Um, so that's a pretty big that's a pretty big plot point that, that the show is constantly trying to push on you, but it just doesn't work in their favor, because they really don't don't look anything alike. <laughs> so you're always like, yeah, this 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 is not something I can accept. Uh, show you're gonna have to do better than that um so anyway he needs to go around he needs to collect all of the you know all of his selves uh because if he does or he's trying not to collect all of his selves because if he does that he turns into a big evil um a big evil zark who like ended the world or whatever and this is actually where the story got kind of good again it felt like we went through a hundred episodes of filler to get to zark and it was it was an interesting little little twist you know zark into the world yuya is zark or zark reincarnated and if he fuses with all his counterparts he ends the world essentially um and the Zark storyline is actually kind of cool. I actually thought there could have been a really cool story there, but it only lasted a couple of episodes. Um, Zark himself, when he turns into, or when Yuya reincarnates into Zark, he looks like a total dweeb. 
Uh, it's even worse than the dub. If you go listen to the dub, let's literally go type in Zark dub version, and it is awful. <laughs> it literally looks like scuffed you, Bell. It looks so poor. Um, from what I understand, there was there was management issues, and then Dark Side Dimension was coming out at the same time, so all the resources got shifted over to that. So it didn't look very good towards the ending. Um, and I also thought that towards the ending they would they would uh, you know they would have like a big epic showdown and they kind of did all the different duelists took on Zark um, but then uh, you know I thought there'd be like one final duel with Akaba Reggie maybe or maybe with uh, you know uh, Ray comes back to life Ray is the fusions of all the Yuzos uh, same thing with with um, with you yeah if if all the Yuzos come together that's like the savior of the of the world. Um, but instead, you get this really weird ending where the same thing happened before, where all the dimensions get split up again, because Yuzo saved us all. But this also makes Yuzo disappear, but it also makes, like, another character turn into a baby. And it's just like this anticlimactic ending, where instead of having a proper ending, they just make Yuya run the gauntlet of all the popular duelists, Elite Four style, and then just beat them because they forgot, oh shit, we haven't actually made Yuya the main character in any of these duels. He's always been kind of a side character up till now. So let's let's actually make him win a bunch of duels in a row to show that he's better than every duelist in this show. Reggie, Shun, all these people. Um, and and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that will make people like him. I guess that's that was the thought process. I don't know. Um, the ending was really... All the duels were very rushed, full of action duels that were really bad, evasion, stuff like that, um, which just let you negate effect damage. Um, and then and then by the end of it, man, I just was like, what is going on? And then the Reggie duel, everyone was like getting like, oh, don't worry, this last duel is really good, Reggie versus Yuya. And then halfway through the duel, they just stopped playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And they just run around picking up action cards to set them for like a minute, two minutes straight. And I was like, how, how can anyone enjoy this? This is so miserable. This, they're not even playing a Yu-Gi-Oh! duel. They're just wasting my time. <laughs> so, I don't, man, I don't know, man. They fumbled the ball hard. Like, after 30 episodes, they kept fumbling it. And then the ending, they just they tanked. They just hella tanked. Um, I don't really know what happened between the, depart the actual writing department and the animation department. But that was, that was just not cool. Not cool at all. Um, like I said before, I really think Arc 5 had a lot of potential, uh, you know, I would have, I would have liked to see, um, you know, changes to the story, either, either the, all they had to do, honestly, is cut down on the, cut down the episodes, cut the episodes down to like 30, 40 episodes tops, cut out all the side content, all the cameo characters, cut out all the characters that literally did nothing in the show, um, and you could have a 30, 40 episode show that's probably like a six out of six out of ten seven out of ten show um they could also uh tell us about zark sooner right they could tell us about yuya and then once we figured out about the dimension we figured about zark we see zark ends the world and it'll be like oh, this big shocking revelation before everyone knows oh my god yuya destroyed the world uh that could have been cool they could have also completely changed arc five and told us the story of zark as season one um, you know, we go over who Zark was, we see he's a struggling duelist, he becomes slowly this big popular name, kind of like sw uh, uh, Swan Song, but like in a Yu-Gi-Oh! verse, you know? And then season two, that's when Yuya comes in and everything, and you know, we, we get like the basic story of Arc 5. That's the only way I could see a 100 plus episode anime work with that concept. Um, any of those would have been good seven eight nine out of ten stories but the story we got is probably the worst one and i have to give it a one out of ten like it's just it's convoluted it makes no sense i probably sound like i'm on drugs telling you the story but that's actually what happened in the story and i left out most of the fluff that happened in the story you know i i didn't tell you everything that happens it's it's really 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 bad writing it's one of the worst you it's fuck being the one of the worst Yu-Gi-Oh stories it's one of the worst stories period that i have ever experienced in my life um and to this day, I just can't believe that's that's what they went with. You know, so it, it had good moments, but overall, the story was just absolutely abysmal. One out of ten for that. Overall, the show, did I have fun watching it? I had fun watching it with Twitch chat. 
right? I had fun watching it with Twitch chat. I had fun with certain moments. Um, <clears throat> I loved the goofy characters uh, in the show. Um, I loved characters like uh, Sawatori, Dennis. I loved when the voice actors went above and beyond and screamed stuff like in English, you know, the show must go on, you know, stuff like that. I love silly stuff like that. So, you know, uh, certain characters, a lot of the side characters definitely sat there with me. Pretty much all the main characters had no impact on me. Um, Yuya did nothing until the end. Reggie did nothing until the end. Yuzo, I hate Yuzo with a passion. Um, I guess that's really all the main characters. Everyone else is kind of a side character. Uh, but I had fun watching it with Twitch chat, and I enjoyed certain moments of it. But the overall story, most of the fun came, made, most of the fun came from making fun of the story that was presented, and the story that was presented was really, really, really bad. So I think overall, I'd give Arc 5 a 3 out of 10. Uh, you can watch it with friends if you want to make fun of people, but if you really want to watch it for the story purposes, honestly, just watch like watch like 30 episodes, you know, skip around every other episode, and you'll probably enjoy it more. Um, overall, it's not a good anime whatsoever. It's got some cool characters, cool ideas, and I hope Konami takes another look at it, because again, I really think there's a potential here. I think there's potential to make this a 10 out of 10 anime, but overall, 3 out of 10, man. I did not enjoy it whatsoever. <laughs> So, there you go. Uh, we'll be watching 5Ds next. So, if you want to watch 5Ds with me, make sure to head over to the Twitch channel. I heard great things about 5Ds, and a lot of people saying that 5Ds is significantly better than Arc 5. So, I have high expectations for it. So, if you'd like to watch my live reactions to the show, come on over, uh, and then we'll do a review for that one as well afterwards. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time.